Last Sunday on Standing Room Only, we talked about this being one of the busiest times ever for our screen crews. Right now, there are more than 30 major dramas shooting around the country. At the same time, the independent sector is also beavering away, particularly the top of the South Island over the past few years. They've recently had a breakthrough. The rights to a new feature film shot in the Marlborough and Nelson regions have been sold to a major US film studio. It was made on a shoestring budget from private funders and it's called North Spur. The warning shot's going to keep them away. Not killing anyone. Hey, p- please. Path, you walk in this cabin is exactly right or you would have lost your legs. We're going after Summer's cabin. He's a one man arsenal. Two men now, apparently. Two men. One One of the stars of North Spur, veteran trans-Tasman actor Marshall Napier, sadly died a week ago before he could attend the premiere in Blenheim next month. Marshall plays a curmudgeonly loner, defending his isolated cabin from invaders in a violent post-pandemic world. I spoke to North Spur screenwriter Justin Eid and to director Alan Falvey, who talked about the local support for an ambitious film industry in their part of the country. It's interesting to note how many people in the region are kind of getting amped up about the opportunity to sort of make larger projects themselves, not only just doing short films, which has kind of been the extent of filmmaking in the region for sort of the last 10 years. So it's nice to be able to hear others speaking about doing similar, knowing that we've done that now and sort of proved that it is possible to do it with a bit of hard work and a, an oily rag, you can you can come up with something pretty special. So it's been really good. I think Justin can probably attest to that as well. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely a lot of positive energy around the region. And I think um, also Sawmill Studios and Blenheim's really adding to that. It's kind of creating a, a focal point and we're all going in there and shooting films there and building sets and... Um, it all goes well for making more features. I think at the moment we're all making a lot of shorts and Aaron and I have managed to get this one feature off the ground and kind of shepherd it for five years. And hopefully once that's distributed and gets out there and if people enjoy it, it'll open the doors for more features. Um, Because uh, short films are great. They're great for cutting your teeth on and learning, but I think features is kind of where we want to go. And if we can take other people with us, that would be amazing. I think that's one of the things that strikes me about all this work you've been doing over the last few years is building that skill set. So your writers, your directors, your actors, of course, and your crew, which means that you are in a situation to make a, a feature film. And I guess it, I don't get a sense that you are so much out there trying to attract the next Amazon Lord of the Rings. What you're really wanting to do is to use local people to tell locally produced stories is that fair yeah i think what's important to note is that you know like 10 years ago we had no film industry in the region so to sort of go from that to where we are now you know so it's really about building that that critical mass and being able to rely on locals to really front productions and not have to rely too much on bringing too many um out of town folks and to help us do films. That was kind of the, a little bit of the case with North Spur is that we had to rely on, you know, a few head of departments to come in and, and help lead the charge and teach some of the other people in our region. But yeah, it's really just about getting as many projects up and going as we can and using um, the vistas of our region as well as the, the film studio that we now have set up. I've seen in your information the line with no help from the Film Commission. We funded and produced the film all off our own bat. Was that written with any degree of resentment? Did you try to get Film Commission funding? No resentment. No, we just um, we went for um, private investment because that was a route that was open to us. Aaron's built good relationships with, with people over in Marlborough there for many years, kind of leading the charge, making short films and running all the meetings and so forth. And We've been making short films over here in Nelson and we just um, kind of thought um, going with private investment gives us just a little bit more creative control. And um, yeah, we were thankful that so many people were generous um, in the region and it was still a very low budget film, but yeah, we've kind of had to do everything ourselves, but that's been good. We've learned along the way and almost become our own distributors as well. So it's all good learnings for next time. Well, we'll come back to the budget in a moment, but let's talk about the story. Uh, what was the starting point for North Spur? I mean, we should start with the pricey of it, really. I can help answer that one since it was sort of a, 
a baby that was born from a, a conversation that I had with a friend. I was recovering on the couch from surgery and uh, I got talking to a friend about doomsday topics, which is, I don't know, it's something that's always fascinated me. I'm no doomsday prep or anything, but I've always liked the concept of being able to survive uh, an apocalyptic sort of situation. So we were talking about electromagnetic pulses and taking out the power to the region. And uh, one of the topics that sort of come up was what would happen sort of six months down the track when uh, when medicine supplies start to run out, when you think about how many people in the world rely on medicine to keep them alive. And that sort of sort of sparked the idea of where I, I, I came to Justin and said, you know, I've got this idea. What do you think we could do to evolve a film around there? So that's, that's initially where, how it took off in sort of 2017. The family we meet first of all, the couple we meet first of all, what's their story? Because they are wary of life in this bleak, lonely part of the bush where you have them. Yeah, well, I think the couple, Callan and Melinda, they're kind of idealists, especially Callan, the husband. Um, they're pacifists. They don't want to hurt anybody. Um, and they've got their own kind of faith. They're trying not to go too far down the route of scaring people off with guns but they do have one pistol <laughs> and they have six shots in it so they're using them wisely and they want to use them as kind of warning shots but um, the wife Melinda's kind of saying are we going to have to waste any more shots on warnings <laughs> sooner or later we're going to have to send a message so it's kind of just asking the question uh, how do pacifist and idealistic and optimistic people live in a world that's gone really bleak and feral um, they're going to have to make some pretty bad choices at some stage. So we kind of just throw them in the tumble dryer and see what choices they make through that sort of bleak, feral landscape that they're in. Uh, they rely on each other. So when when she is injured and requires medicine, he's all she has. Yeah, that's right. And and Callan realises he has to go out there into the world to get, get that medicine, which isn't easy to get. Everyone's looking for the drugs, the antidote to this um pathogen that's been released and so um he's got to go out there into the violent world and and she's only got kind of six days supply of um antibiotics to keep her okay so it kind of gets a bit desperate and he has to toughen up and that's where he meets a, a character that's defending a cabin and he does have the drugs which is marsh played by marshall napier um beautifully actually and um he kind of teaches the young guy to toughen up a bit and the young guy kind of says to him well What's the point of life if we're just shooting everything that moves? You know, isn't there some kind of compassion at some point and humanity? Um, we can't toughen up too much. So it kind of, they kind of rub up against one another and, and I guess learn from one another. It's a great tribute actually to Marshall because this must have been one of his last roles and he really <laughs> inhabits, you know, this guy, he's gruff, he's wielding a gun, he's, he's isolated, he's um, defensive, but he establishes a deal. With Callum, you know, he, he knows that he needs extra help over the next few days. How did you get Marshall to take on the role? Because it feels like it was made for him. We wrote up some character bios and Justin and I discussed who would be top of our priority list in terms of Australasian actors. And uh, having just seen Bellbird being released, it kind of sparked the idea that, you know, perhaps Marshall could come back from Australia and, and do the role. And as soon as Justin mentioned his name, I could kind of instantly visualise him in the role. So first things first was just really contact his agent and find out whether there's any interest. And literally within the first day, it was a case of he's interested and uh, let's have a conversation about it. And sort of we discussed the, I guess, our, our hurdles we had in terms of um, financials, budget, that sort of thing, being a, a low low budget feature and not being able to pay much. But it was the story and the character itself which really appealed to Marshall and it's resonated with him throughout the whole process. It's been a role that he was really, really excited about, something different, and he's always wanted to do a story in a post-apocalyptic world. So it was nice to be able to, I guess, offer him a few things as well as give him the chance to come back to New Zealand and come and see Marlborough again and, and be involved with us. What were some of the challenges of filming? I mean, honestly, we know Nelson Marlborough to be so beautiful. I'm you know, struggling with flooding at the moment, but, you know, such a, a beautiful, light, bright, sunny place. And here we are. It's dark. It's moody. It's broody. It's dangerous. It's threatening. How did you make that work? Well, yeah, um, when filming, yeah. there's always um, the two challenges are never enough time and never enough money. So we had those, you know, and, and weather also played a part, but thankfully we didn't get rained on too much. But I 
think um, just always trying to keep to schedule was the hard part. And what we did was we had a lot of action in this film and a lot of people thought it couldn't be filmed in 18 days, which is all we had. So when we got towards the end of it and we realized we were running out of time, we just did the usual trick of shooting out your main cast who have to leave. And then we thought we'll leave um, some of the trickier sequences that don't involve the main cast till later in the summer. So we went back and did four pick up days just with local actors and and body doubles and that sort of thing and that's how we managed to kind of fit it all in but yeah there's always challenges you know um when you're on set and it's a high, heightened environment and people are emotional and invested and but I think we worked really really well together Aaron has a good way with people and with the actors and gets them all together and and with camaraderie and joking around and yeah I think it was a really good community spirit on the shoot actually hell of an achievement how did you manage to get the attention of a US film studio? Are you are you naming them? We can't name them, unfortunately, at the moment, uh, just due to something in our contract, but um, it'll come out eventually once they release their trailer. But um, basically, we, we got through a sales agent who had relationships with them, and that sales agent came through a personal relationship that we had. So sometimes it is about relationships. Um but we had to have a good product that's stacked up. You know, they had to look at it and think this is um, worth streaming on our platform. So, yeah, we, we believe we made a good product with the money that we had. I did go in there with the dream and the goal of being able to get this distributed internationally. So I've always had a belief that the film projects that we do are of a level where people will recognise that talent and we just needed that opportunity to do it. And I think we've we've proven that now through getting this deal. And, yeah, it means a hell of a lot. It's it's almost like a dream that's been in your head for quite some time to do a feature film and to be able to get it released, not just in New Zealand but around the world. That's That's been a huge long-term dream of mine and it's starting to come to fruition now and it's, it just feels right. It's kind of, I'm not trying to be sound arrogant or anything like that, but it just feels like it, it was meant to be. And this is just the logical steps that we need in order to keep going forward and keep moving towards making bigger and better films. I mean, all the platforms are starving, aren't they? Hungry for for product at the moment. You know, it's, it's very, very competitive uh, and viewers want new stuff all the time. So there's this big churn. But if this goes down well, and we know that they take notice of ratings, right, once they go up on whatever yep. platform it is, if this goes well, if it finds its market, if it's promoted, you know, it gets the eyeballs, what does that mean for you and for the work that you're doing for the film industry in the top of the South? That's it's huge. It's part of that whole dream come true, and it's... We've already have a slate of films and um, screenplays that are already written by Justin that are ready to go. So we we just essentially need funding. And our next idea or next film project that we have that we want to bring off the off the rank is uh, is quite a big one, and we'll need a bigger budget for it. But we kind of needed to prove with Norspur that we could do it on a low budget, and then say if they can do it on that, what can you do with this amount of money? So that's kind of the the hope and dream is that we will get the the right amount of funding for that. I mean, do you hope eventually that you could get Film Commission money? Because that is, you'd think, a bit easier to get than the private investment that you've relied on so much, even with all the goodwill that you have, obviously, in your region. Yeah, I mean, you, you never say never. Um, hopefully, you know, the Film Commission will be um, leaning towards us with seeing the success that we're getting with this film. At this point, uh, we're, we're more looking at private investment and, we're, and what we do is we try and just sort of bundle together groups of investors and <laughs> come up with the budget. So we've got American, um, some American investors that are very keen to work with us too and, and also just exploring the um, the distribution route that we've um, now opened up with this, this major company that often they will um, front some uh, investment against pre-sales. So just looking, we're learning the whole producing game and it gets very sort of like a numbers game initially to kind, kind of get the finance together. But basically it all starts with the script and I've been working on scripts for many, many years and trying to um, get them right and they always evolve. You're never, you're never quite there. They evolve during the filming and the editing as well. But um, basically you have to have a good script to um, interest people up front. So we're probably more going down the, the area of private investment at the moment. But yeah, we'd definitely love to work with the Film Commission one day if possible. 
all those I have this picture of you having this big pile of scripts, <laughs> you know, by your bed, <laughs> yeah. you know, ready That's, to go. Uh, what are the sorts of stories, Justin, that you want to tell in your film and do you believe that they will hook in with what people are wanting to watch at the moment? What we've tried to do is box a bit clever and, and make put genre films, um, so action, comedy, you know, the things that sell thrillers um, to the fore in our slate that we've got going forward because um, just a good old-fashioned yarn, really well told. You know, some, sometimes people are trying to get across too many, um, oh, especially today, you know, there's, there's narratives that people are trying to force and the vast majority of people are, are not wanting to have those narratives pushed on them too much. They're just wanting good old-fashioned entertainment and real people in the world struggling against real problems you know just my own personal preference i'm not really into any of the um superhero or comic type movies because to me they just don't have real stakes or, or real human drama so i know they're still very popular and making a lot of money <laughs> that tends to be the younger crowd but i just want to tell stories that um, people can relate to that makes them think about their lives and just has lots of good twists and turns and good characters and mm. i do have the personal dramas and that too that I've got there but at the moment with what we're developing with Aaron and I we're just sort of sticking to solid genre material and things that will sell around the world um, you do have to have an eye on the audience and what will sell not just about your own sort of personal creative preferences so yeah that's where we're going at the moment. Screenwriter Justin Ede and director Aaron Falvey. North Spur premieres in Blenheim on the 1st of September at the event cinema before opening around the country.